Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, so as Shimon said, I'm coming from the consumer environment, from the mass market environment. I'm responsible for uh, private customers as well as small businesses. And this is kind of an angle and perspective I'm going to take uh, in this short input and speech of mine. Talking about smart home and uh, IOTs, there is actually a lot. Uh, there are a lot of things in the world. There are hundreds of solutions. There are hundreds of companies providing those solutions, ranging from big multinationals to small niche companies, uh, producing kind of single-purpose devices all the way to multi-purpose uh, all-in-one solutions. So one would say the market is booming, uh, the potential is huge, and the future is bright. Now, on one hand, on the hand of supply, we have all the offerings, and on the other hand, we have millions of customers, or actually billions of customers, if you take the kind of global point of view. There is a ton of research that you can find everywhere, which basically says people are interested in smart homes, people are interested in smart devices. When asked, and Again, as I said, knowing that many of you come from kind of industrial and B2B background and you are surely not an average consumer and you will be more like geeks. If we ask, however, average uh, consumers, what they basically tell you is that they do believe that Internet of Things smart homes will become common, as common as mobile phones, which everybody has in the pocket today. They will even tell you that uh, they are aware of the basic benefits that the uh, smart home can bring. It will make their life easier, will enable them to spend more time with their families. It will perhaps make their life more secure and potentially it will bring them savings and save them money. And when you talk to a uh, little bit more technical savvy customers, you will see that they have actually quite a serious and high intention to buy or purchase a smart home element within the next 6 to 12 months, within a very short time. And many of, of them already have it. So one would say, on the supply side, there is a lot. And there is a huge demand with very low penetration nowadays. So this is a great place to be and uh, there is only a huge potential and value to be created. Now, the question is, is it really the case? Is it the case? So from now on, I will not speak about people like people in this room. I will speak about the typical customer. I will speak about the mass market consumer. I will speak about the people, th thanks to who, we can massify things, and that's why make technologies much cheaper and much more, uh, much more scalable and therefore available. Actually, what I'm saying is that a typical mass market consumer doesn't understand and doesn't care. As hard as it sounds, that's what we see. That's what we see when we talk to customers. That's what we see when we meet them in our shops, in our call centers every day. They might be somewhat interested in the concept, but once the point gets to the making purchasing decision, when it gets to the point taking cash out of your pocket and putting it on the table, this is where the rubber hits the road and then the reality comes out. They start asking the most basic questions. What is it for? How does it work? Will I be able to use it? Will I be able to install it? How much does the installation cost? Will it actually work with the things I have at home? Will it be compatible? And how much does it cost? It's, it's too expensive. And often it's a gimmick. It's nice to have, but I don't need it for my life. I have much, much more important things to do and other priorities. So this is the mass market, million consumer market reality. 
So despite the fact that there are so many of us, because telecoms are part of this ecosystem, there are so many of us trying to crack the market, what I'm saying we haven't done so. We haven't managed yet. Why is it? Uh, some of these were already mentioned. There are obviously barriers. There are barriers to mass market adoption. You can look at them from different point of view, but I tried to summarize in those five kind of areas. So number one, uh, design and ease of use. Many of these things should fit on you in your home, in your interior. So they should have a, at least some sort of a look. So I see a majority of a male audience, which might be has, has a higher tolerance on how things match in the interior, but maybe your wives and girlfriends, they have a different opinion. And they don't want to put an ugly device on the, in the middle of the living room. But it's not only that. It's about, okay, once I have it, will I be able to use it? When I'm actually not a technician. I'm not a geek. There is this grandmother, grandmother's test that you might know. If my grandmother knows how to set it up, if she's able to plug and play it, then, then it passes the test. When uh, Mr. Schultz was kind of setting up his presentation, I have noticed on the screen here, there was actually a line. If you want to ha learn how to connect this device, click this uh, URL. So this is actually a nice, uh, nice live case of how things should not be working. I just want to plug the projector and it should simply work. <laughs> I don't want to learn how to, how to connect it. Compelling use case. Why do I even need it? So of course it might sound very sexy and nice to be able to switch on your light while you are sitting in your couch, just holding your phone without needing to get up. But once you are supposed to put a couple of hundreds of uh, crowns or dozens of, of euros for a Philips U-Lite, you might actually uh, change your mind. It's a gimmick. Do I really need it? No. Well, once you turn this story into a story what you can actually do is to turn on the light in your living room while you are at work, you are outside of home, in order to kind of minimize or, or reduce the risk of your home being burglared, it might be a different story and perhaps a little bit more appealing argument. There is this famous uh, Larry Pages of Google uh, toothbrush t test, if you, if you have ever heard about it. So every time you come up with an idea or a solution, you ask yourself, will the customer use it at least once or twice per day, and will he find it actually useful? If not, drop it, because it's not going to work. Things have been said on uh, compatibility and interoperability. I might really l fall in love with the sensor or with the device, until the moment when I find out that I cannot, to, cannot connect it to my hub that I already purchased for, for hundreds of dollars before. And clearly a huge issue of cost of ownership. So this is not only about the purchase price, about the pricing. And as a matter of fact, many of these devices are quite expensive. They are at least hundreds of dollars. And if you want to get a little bit more professional solutions, thousands of dollars. It's about not only the amount of money it costs and the retail price, it's about smart pricing. So instead of a one-time payment, can I have some sort of installments of, or subsidized plan or leasing? Can I have it bundled with any other utility or service? So I present the cost to the customer in a different way and I kind of break down the barrier of high initial setup costs. But it's not only that, there is one more, and I would argue more important dimension in terms of pricing, and it is actually the total value balance of the ownership of the IoT or smart home device. Because this is not about the cost that you have when you are purchasing the device, it's about the, the cost that you save if you have the right device and you use it, you use it smartly. And this is the way that we should be presenting the, the solutions. It's not about how much you pay, it's about how, how much you overall pay and save 
because you have this solution. And clearly, last not least, data privacy and security. A lot has been said and, and written about this. Um, smart home solutions have one very specific perspective because it's actually about letting someone, be it a machine or some sort of anonymous service, getting into my house, getting into my home where my children live. So that gets a little bit different perspective. So, I've listed the barriers, I've listed the problems. Now, we as telecom companies, we are part of the ecosystem, we are part of the problem, and I believe we should be part of the solution. So what I'm saying, that the telecoms, telecom industry has a very strong motivation and is very well positioned to enable smart home mass market uh, penetration. Why is that? I've listed three reasons. Starting with the most obvious one, people working in telecom companies left love technologies. Now, you might ask yourself, why is he mentioning something so obvious? Well, I think actually this is a very important driving force because there is not too many large-scale big, large big organizations which use distribution networks which have technically skilled people. Not too many. Second, obviously there is value. There is cash to be made. Telecom companies are, as many other industries, facing uh, the points of saturation and looking for new, uh, new sources of revenue and value. And this is clearly one of them because the penetration is still extremely low. And third, and potentially most important, I believe telecom uh, tech, uh, companies have one of the best, if not the best, go-to-market infrastructure. And I will very shortly explain what I mean by that. Even though I believe the principles apply generally, I will talk about O2, about my company that I represent. But I believe uh, this is something that is uh, overall common in other markets. We as O2, we are an integrated telecom operator. So what you might say that here in the Czech Republic, approximately 50% of all households have at least one of our service. Be it a mobile phone, be it an internet connection, mobile or fixed, be it IPTV, be it a, uh, be it a fixed voice line. So we have a very large scale. Second point, we provide to many households the connectivity. We are the ones delivering the router to the household. Now, router doesn't make a smart home, but it's a very important gateway. It's a very important gate into the smart home, a starting point. And we already have almost a one billion install base routers in the country. Third, extremely important point, we already have billing relationship. We send invoice, millions of invoices to our customers every month and we have a permission from the customer that we can bill them. This is an incredibly huge advantage because for a new starting company, getting the billing relationship is probably the most difficult thing to do. So, <clears throat> if we are smart, and we create the right product by actually smart bundles and add-ons, we can very quickly and easily build customer for an additional smart home or IoT functionality or service without needing to set up anything, without needing to have any type of written agreement with the customer. Distribution channels. I think this is a key. Because if we talk about massification, this is to a big extent about distribution. And I'm not talking about distribution only from a point of view of selling. That is, of course, the case. But it's before the selling comes, what needs to come is education. It has been very said by, uh, very clearly said by the two gentlemen uh, talking before me, the market needs to be educated. 
and they need to be educated in a very smart and simple way. Now, the distribution channels, if strong enough, they play a very important role in education. Many of these things need to be felt and, and, and touched. Uh, a common, uh, different example, but very similar to this. Some of you who are from this market know that we have been, for some time and recently intensively, marketing IPTV. We are the great, uh, largest IPTV provider. <coughs> and we have been trying to penetrate the Czech market with IPTV solutions. Now, if you, if you say O2 TV or IPTV to a customer, to a regular, typical consumer, the person doesn't know what you mean. The people have no idea, they don't understand the concept. Because TV is the TV set from Samsung that I have on my table, and it's the Czech national broadcasting that I get through the wire I have on the roof. So when you say O2 TV, what exactly do you mean? Is it a TV channel that you are trying to sell me? Or is it actually a new device? Is it a new Samsung, O2 Samsung type of device? So, as crazy as it may sound, this is actually a very, very big penetration barrier standing in uh, between us and the mass market kind of uh, scale, scaling up. In terms of distribution, we have more than 150 shops, we have hundreds of retail partners, we have, we have uh, in the consumer call centers uh, around 1,000 operators and they can all help and uh, help us educate and penetrate the market with the right solutions. And last but not least, we can influence this. As it was clearly shown before and it's clear to you, this is and will be a very important remote controller of any things that you have uh, in your home. Now, if you look at our customer base, to a large percentage of customers we actually sell this, so we are somewhat able to pre-install the right applications on the phones. And to uh, the other part of the customers who buy the device in the open market, we can provide it and push it over the air. So, it's a very important part of the puzzle and of the ecosystem that we as an integrated operator also own. And these are the things that actually make the smart home. Now, can we do it alone? Not a chance, because we don't have the cap capability, capacity and knowledge to actually produce the IOTs. It's more some of, some of you who can do it. We can package it nicely, we can bundle it with our existing products, and we can try to educate and sell it to the market. But we need partners like you to help us and do it together with us. So I'd like to close my short presentation with a, with a simple statement. O2 is absolutely interested in the smart home business and in the IoT business because we see value there. Second, we are already working on it. You might not see the things on the market yet, but we are very intensively working on it. Third, we need partners like you, local, international, to help us build things together. So I'd like to close with kind of a request. If any of you has any sensible idea that you feel is worth discussing with us, please come, discuss, and uh, I can promise that we will try to evaluate any option that you put on the table. Thank you.